Bienvenidos a este canal, lo invito rápidamente a suscribirse y activar la campana de notificaciones. Rusia ve peligro de un conflicto mundial. El presidente de la Duma Estatal señaló el apoyo de Occidente a Ucrania que Kyiv insiste en pedir. Cada acto de asistencia a Ucrania es protección de vidas. Así dijo Zelensky. No olvide dejar un comentario en este video y un me gusta también para apoyarnos. Muchísimas gracias. Después del suministro armamentístico que Occidente proporcionó a Ucrania en los últimos meses y de la posibilidad de que Estados Unidos almacene ojivas nucleares en el Reino Unido, Rusia ha admitido que ve peligro de una nueva mundial. En esta ocasión fue el presidente de la Duma Estatal Rusa quien dio la voz de alarma el pasado fin de semana con un mensaje publicado en Telegram. La ideología fascista se ha convertido en la norma para los dirigentes de los países de la OTAN. Llegó a afirmar después de que se refiriera a las autoridades de Kyiv como nazis. Señaló que entre otros dirigentes de la Alianza Atlántica, John Biden, el presidente de Canadá, Reino Unido, de Francia, Alemania, como responsables de justificar eh, todos estos males de, en Kyiv y también de patrocinar la política eh, seguida por el régimen de Zelensky ¿Qué opina de esta información? Nuevamente los invito a suscribirse Gracias por estar acá Noticias al Día You remember uh, uh, early last year I talked about how as we were giving air defense equipment to Ukraine they couldn't put it everywhere so there were going to be some strikes in some of their cities Russia now has the same problem except this time Ukraine now has drones and some missiles that they're using to great effects inside of Russian territory. So it's forcing yeah. Russia to reconsider where they're placed in their air defense uh, instead of getting hit in the rear areas like they were several times today in St. Petersburg, Russia. That's that's fascinating to me how uh, Ukraine is taking the fight to the rear areas like now, right now. Yeah, and a Ukrainian defense source tells CNN that they have carried out a drone attack on a Russian oil terminal on the Gulf of Finland. Uh, the source called it a new stage, targeting military facilities and oil depots. Um, what's your assessment of that? And I guess, how does it fit into the overall picture? Because, you know, maybe you and I were talking about this earlier this past week, but Fred Plykin had this report about commanders, Ukrainian commanders, having to be judicious and thrifty when it comes to how much ammo you, they use on the battlefield because they're worried right. about supply lines drying up. But it sounds as though the Ukrainians are still taking the fight to the Russians. They, they are, and that's what I just pointed out. We're, yeah. we're seeing the very good use of operational targeting. That strike against that oil field, as you said, in the Sea of Finland, is actually against the, the city of St. Petersburg. That's where that oil field is. By the way, I don't think it's a coincidence that St. Petersburg is the home of President Putin. So what we're seeing right, right now is some really good operational targets, long range strikes. I believe it's the fact that the Ukrainian general officers are saying, hey, we can't fight the tactical battle right now because our supply lines are disrupted. So we have to take the fight to the operational and strategic level and hit these Russian logistics targets and threaten their Uh, their resources and their stability and their supply and also threaten their citizens inside of the, Fe the Russian Federation. Artillery is key as Ukrainian forces try to hold off massive Russian assaults on the Eastern Front. But Kiev's ammo shortages are getting worse by the day. This U.S. provided M109 Paladin howitzer near okay. Bakhmut is often yeah. silent because they don't have enough <laughs> shells to target the Russians, the commander tells me. We cannot fulfill our tasks 100%, he says, although we really want to. My crew and other crews are just waiting for it and are ready to work around the clock. But it gets even worse. Finally, resupply does arrive, but it's only four rounds, and this type of ammo won't hurt the Russians much. This really illustrates the shortages that Ukrainians have to deal with. Four rounds, that's all they're going to get right now. And by the way, they're not even explosive rounds, they're smoke rounds. These shells will barely explode on impact. It's almost like firing cannonballs in medieval times. But a commander says sometimes it's all they can do. Every shell that is suitable for the Paladin we use no shells. The Russians face no such shortages in this area. Ukrainian military intelligence believes Russia produced around 2 million rounds last year and acquired around 1 million from North Korea. Massive barrages have laid waste to Bakhmut and much of the surrounding area. At the headquarters of the 93rd Mechanized Brigade's Artillery Division, the frustration is palpable. 
From their drones, they can see the Russians gather to continue their assaults on Ukrainian positions, but they often can't take them out because they need to conserve ammunition, the commander tells me. The ratio is about 10 to 1, he says. Ammunition is very important to us. Russia is a country that produces ammo. They have strategic reserves. Yes, they use old Soviet systems, but Soviet systems can still kill. Even without enough ammo, the Ukrainians say they are stopping most Russian assaults here. And the M109 crew did manage to fire at Russian positions. But they know they'll need a lot more firepower to stop Russian advances. For Plekin, CNN, near Bakhmut, Ukraine. It's a sight Ukrainian troops in Avdivka see all too often. A massive Russian armored assault force coming right at them. The Russian infantry moves with virtually no cover. The Ukrainians call these meat assaults because the Russian troops have virtually no chance of survival as Ukrainian drones hunt them down. They assault with a large number of personnel, the head of the drone unit that filmed the videos tells me. Assault after assault, non-stop. If we kill 40 to 70 of them with drones in a day, the next day they renew their forces and continue to attack. It's been going on for several months, as Russian President Vladimir Putin seems hell-bent on taking Avdivka. Russian vehicles under artillery fire as they get close to Ukrainian positions. The ground littered with dead and dying Russian soldiers trying to overwhelm the Ukrainian defenses here. The Ukrainians say they're holding back most of the assaults, but are outgunned and outmanned. We need more people, more military, more equipment. We need more ammunition, more drones, he says. Unfortunately, we don't have the amount needed to win. We need a lot. And the Russians not facing the same shortages are dropping massive amounts of ordnance on the Ukrainians. Everything from artillery to heavy guided aerial bombs. One of the key defense points, a massive coke plant at the edge of town. And that's where these guys are setting up their defenses. Under constant fire, elite snipers from Ukraine's Omega Special Forces. Here, they have the cover to hit advancing Russian soldiers. Their anger visible in the hoodies they wear for our interview. With the weapons we have, at distances up to 1,300 meters, the effectiveness of our work is 90 percent, he says. For that kind of precision, they need to keep their weapons in pristine condition all the time, they say. At the beginning, it seemed the Russians could encircle Avdivka very quickly, he says. But as we see, Avdivka has been ours for three months and we're holding on. Holding Avdivka for now, even as assault after assault eats away at Ukrainian defenses. Si no te quieres perder de los últimos acontecimientos que pasan en el mundo, suscríbete y activa la campana. Somos Noticias al Día.